uh, Wales uh, as a part of Akenye Mishuma Kolokuti YLTD. So I am the guy who will be running around and doing research and uh, providing input on all uh, legal matters into um, you know our dealings as Akenya PTY Limited. <laughs> My name is Andy Lefulani, so I am the CEO of Finlight Financial Education and we've been providing financial education and financial well-being solutions to consumers, uh, employees, stockfills, um, professionals for the past 12 years. I'm excited. Every time uh, someone takes an initiative to empower people, I'm always there. And that's the reason why I'm here. We are just going to be discussing the issue of debt. Uh, Andy, maybe if I start with you, um, when we're discussing the issue of debt, we cannot do that without unpacking the credit profile and why that is important. So if you can just touch on that um, and then we can um, then unpack how do you access your credit profile? Okay, yeah, so um, let me just you know, give a background that a very small percentage of our population has actually accessed their credit profile in the past 12 months, much in the black communities because this thing of financial literacy, you know, it's not, I, I know that on social media, it's quite popular, but on the grassroots level in our communities, it's not there yet. And that's why people are taking advantage of. So a credit profile is, um, it's your profile of your credit history and how you manage credit, uh, which comes from the credit bureaus. The credit bureaus are almost like um, a, a data hub um, or house where all the information regarding your credit gets stored over time. So what, what happens is that each and every month, the creditors supply the credit bureaus. There's about uh, five, six credit bureaus in South Africa, including um, XDS, TransUnion. Um, so there's about five or six of them. Some of them are actually international. So each and every creditor, if you're a credit active, if you're credit active, it means you are a person who takes credit, you know, who transacts through credit, whether through credit card, clothing mm. account, or whatever, whatever case may be. So the information of how, what debt have you taken? When did you take it? Mm. Um, uh, how much is it that you have taken? How much are you paying on a monthly basis? Are you skipping any payments? All that information can gets transferred um, or gets sent to a credit bureau who then yeah. stores it according to the law. Okay, so credit is highly regulated um, yes. by the yes. National Credit Act. Um, so this all happens under the National Credit Act and how frequent these creditors actually report to the credit bureaus also happens under the Credit Act. The credit bureaus also have a duty to safeguard this information and make sure that it's protected. Mm. Um, so then, uh, you as an individual has an opportunity, uh, most of them would say on your birthday or once a year, to access this credit uh, information of yours through what is called a credit profile, which would then give you an overview of uh, how your credit actually looks like. It means, uh, or your credit profile looks like, all the balances, all the creditors, when did you actually take the credit and all, all those things. And why this is important, it's, it's for you to be able to, uh, you know, have, have a holistic view um, mm. so that if anything that is sinister, like anything mm. that is not correct in your mm. information, because that determines, and you should think of, you know, how credit profiling is actually important because it, it, it either keeps people in poverty, in poverty, or it helps you to create wealth um, over time because... Mm. The people who have a bad credit, now we're getting into a bit of details about credit uh, profiling. If you have a bad credit uh, profile, uh, and that would be, you know, the symbol of it would be a, a bad credit score, which is lower than the average. Mm. If you have a bad credit score, you are likely to get a higher credit or not even get credit when you want to access credit in, uh, you know, in, in whether you want to buy a house or whatever. For, uh, for asset 
accumulation or wealth creation, this is very important because yes. you can't buy a house, you can't leverage, yes. you can't buy a house, rent it out and create wealth because yes. of that. And, uh, yeah. We know that with the housing issue, most black people don't own properties. Yeah. Right? They rent yes. them out or you know, they live in back rooms or sheds yeah. or whatever. Yes. You want to move out of that situation. Your credit score would be something that is bad for you. I don't know but, if you want to... Yeah, no, uh, sorry, Andy, I just want to interject there. You mentioned something that we need to access, your, you can access your credit report. Um, is it for free once a year or you should pay for? Um, and just clarify that point. Yes, so a credit score, I mean, a credit report is free once a year. Yeah. Um, on your birthday or just randomly at any given uh, time of the year. Yes. Um, yes. So it is, is, it is entirely free. There's other agencies that want to sell the credit. So they are retailers. Yes. They would take uh, credit information from the credit bureaus and send it to you. Sometimes they aggregate it. Aggregate it means they take yes. different credit information from different credit bureaus and put it together to give you a clearer view because sometimes there's discrepancies. So yes. One credit bureau will have this information, another one would not have it. Absolutely. Have it. So that's why you will look at your credit uh, information, for instance, and it looks fine. But when you go into a, a uh, into taking credit, they tell you, no, you, you are actually blacklisted. And you ask yourself, how? Because I've just looked at my credit bureau. So mm. there's those discrepancies. Um, they should be cleared each and every three months. So by law, these credit bureaus should actually reconcile all their information so that everyone has correct information amongst them. But it's not happening consistently. So that's why mm. all, all, all defenses. So um, if I'm, I'm hearing you clearly, um, the, these five uh, credit bureau um, companies are, are actually reporting to the, um, they are actually regulated to, and, and that is governed by the National Credit Act. So do the banks um, use all of them because you're talking about aggregated. So do the bank have access to all of them so that then they can actually manage these discrepancies if one credit bureau doesn't have or reflect the correct information about you? The credit bureaus are using um, one or two. Uh, yes. um, I mean, uh, the banks are actually using one or two credit bureaus. So sometimes they will use one credit bureau for, for their front end and another one from, for their back end. These credit bureaus, they are so entrenched into, into the banking system that mm. they mm. also develop the credit policy uh, and the credit criteria of a bank mm. or the credit model. Thing. So the bank would say, okay, uh, we want to categorize these kind of demographics of people in this way, in this way, in this way, in this way, because these guys are, are credit specialists. <clears throat> they will develop then a model that will be used by the banking, the credit department of the bank to profile people, uh, you know, through a system that consumes information and gives an output automated most of the time. And then the team would then have to sit down and apply their, you know, their discretion in how the system has actually done this. So it's unlikely that they're going to use all the credit bureaus. Hey, it's likely uh, that it's not always going to be correct. So that's why um, when you look at people like um, your bond originators, for yes. instance, right, uh, that apply for a bond on your behalf, they yes. look... If a, a, a bond originator does good work, they would do certain things, things like that. So they will back it up and say, no, no, no. But you've got this information, uh, you know, but, but uh, so it's and so different. Information. You know, it's, it's actually different. So this client has actually paid off this debt yes. uh, three months ago or six months ago. Yes. Uh, it, 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 shouldn't, it shouldn't be an obstacle anymore. And they will say, no, okay, back it up with uh, whatever clearance uh, certificate from a creditor and whatever, sort it out and then send the application back, you know. Um, so there is, there is those, there are those kind of challenges. Yeah, you mentioned something that is quite interesting here yeah, about the profiling, because I, I understand that this, <laughs> there, there was an issue with a certain bank about the profiling, um, that it can it um, be also, uh, you know, has anything to do with race, uh, education, location, yeah, um, so, mm, 
systematically. Yes. A people that are of low earning, and most of the people that are low earning are, you know, are Africans or South Africans. Or, Absolutely. Or native, so it uh, automatically Africans. puts them in a different category altogether. Automatically. Yeah. And that is legal. And it's it got nothing to do with their behavior. No, no. Just the fact that you are actually low, uh, low earning, you are considered to be high risk when you get into the credit system. And the likelihood is that you are going to get a higher, um, you know, credit uh, interest. Interest, because, who... yeah. yeah. I was going to go there that because of this um, profiling, you are then going to be penalized because some lenders will not shun you, but they will actually hike the interest, which then leads to all these issues in terms of high indebtedness because it's the servicing of higher interest that you are not even paying your capital, but you are actually servicing the, 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 the higher interest. So that can also be systematic beside the behavior. We also need to deal with the issues of a systematic profile. That, yes, no, yeah. you're correct. Okay. Um, yes, if you, if you, when you are a consumer advocate, um, uh, these are the things that, because I mean, I, you know, a lot of things, when the law actually becomes law, it first gets gazetted. Yes. And they need to offer their opinion. And most of us who are actually affected negatively by this, we unfortunately don't participate. Absolutely. And it's certain civil organizations that come forth and say, no, but this is discriminatory. But what the banks would do, they would use data, <laughs> yeah. you know, to pick up, you know, what they are advocating for low income people, you know, you know, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of dynamics into it. The reason why people of low income earning are not um, performing well when it comes to credit has a lot of factors. It's not just the fact that they are low earning. Yeah. Number one. Yes. Uh, they could be the fact that the financial literacy is not as high. Okay. No, Absolutely. Not good. Low income earning, there's a direct correlation that the financial literacy, because they don't have much exposure about credit information. So it, they, there's what is, is, is called financial inclusion. So they are not included. Yes. They don't have financial planners that care about them and sit down with them and, you know, if they just have financial planners that sell them funeral products. They sell them funeral yeah. policies, even if they are 20 yeah. funeral policies and they are paying exactly. 5,000 yeah. rent. Exactly. So the financial literacy is low. But number two, the, the low income earning have been exposed to unsecured credit since the dawn of the National Credit Act around 2007. Um, so a lot of people didn't know to have during you know the, our past dark days, mm. did not mm. have access to uh, credit so when the when the you know the credit um, uh, um, act was changed to accommodate everyone, and unsecured credit became popular, Absolutely. which meant unsecured credit in simple terms means that someone can access credit without putting any collateral, collateral. or any security. You know, when you went to the bank at first, they would say, okay, no, if you need twenty thousand, you need to give us furniture of worth twenty thousand or what something like that. Unsecured credit means you can access credit without any collateral but it's extremely expensive. Absolutely. So the poor people who did not have collateral got exposed to this unsecured credit, a lot Absolutely. of it, and they got targeted. Absolutely, <laughs> so no, they, they do get like targeted, yes. Because of unsecured credit. Like it's not, it's not, um, uh, it's not, it's not it's something that is, is, is hidden, you know, it, it's just well-known fact that the banks are, are standing like this because of unsecured credit, uh, especially in Africa. So the, these people then access um, a credit because it's expensive, it's not as sustainable. So you are exposing people that have low income, low financial literacy mm. into expensive credit. Mm. And mm. the idea was that no, these people will then take this money and start small businesses, but they are laborers, they are employees, they are in mining, Absolutely. they are in farming. They, are, they don't have time to start small businesses. Yeah, so this is where I, feel, I think the, the whole system, in, including the, the National Credit Act, actually got it wrong. Uh, they just opened the floodgates and people took credit. It's just natural that people mm. are going to take credit because they want things, you know. It's just a natural behavior. And the, the, the Credit Act didn't safeguard, um, you know, um, these uh, community of people to, to be able to uh, use credit in a responsible way and not to be exploited. And, and then uh, they introduced TCF. <laughs> 
They introduced yeah. CCF and we still have more complaints in terms of treating customer fairly, but we, mm. we still have more and more complaints. I understand now they are changing that uh, to something else. The reason why I, I brought in Andy here because he's is a, is a, is an expert, and I always said that at Akega we will collaborate with experts in the field because our main focus is to empower ordinary people of South Africa. So we are not um, looking at a particular class or a, at a particular level of high incomers or black diamonds or any any South African. Um, they need to have access. I think that our passion lies on empowering our people to be able to make informed financial decisions. And, and that is why we are bringing these things. And it is very interesting, Andy, that you brought in. The reason why, you know, in the rules of the game, you need to understand law. Because even if you are playing Monopoly, you need to understand what is the what, what are the rules. And, and, and it's interesting how this, you know, the it actually ties up. If people are not aware what is their right um, and not aware what is it that it's being given to them. For example, Andy mentioned something here that people are now, they didn't have access. We don't have access to buy houses. Um, we, we do not have access to cash to buy cars. And therefore we always have to knock they um, on, on, on these financial institutions. And that is where now you need to understand behind the scenes, when they start telling you that you need to pay this 15% or 10% interest, where is this coming from? Um, uh, besides the fact that you, we, we always, uh, I mean, what is very important here that is coming out is it has always been um, the duty of the consumer and the fact that we have always emphasized on the behavior of the consumer. Now we're looking at people low income as we're not exposed to high debt. I mean, it's it's high income uh, in, income earners that are exposed to you know hundreds and hundred thousands of of rents when it comes to debt. Low income as they are servicing very little debt, but the interest that is being levied on them it's it's very high. And now we need to understand these are the reasons and how do we empower them to know. Number, number two, Andy mentioned something that is very critical here when he said that the access, what is being given to them, the options, it is always a personal loans, you know, um, as a means of accessing that loan. But the issue of access here is very, very critical. So access to education, number one, people are not aware of what is it that they are buying, what are the costs, and Akege, I'm going to come back to you. Why it is important, if we're looking at all the contracts, because these debts are actually, um, when you take a personal loan, it becomes contractual, right? And, and now you will find that as a person is, is actually so excited to sign this 50,000, there's a, a long list of papers uh, with, you know, wording that they don't even understand because that is not your day-to-day -day language. And we're talking about, about uh, people who are not even, you know, financial literate, literate to understand the basic concepts like interest, what is interest, you know, what is capital uh, and inflation and so on and so on. Now, why it is that the regulations or the law or the contract part of it always has this language that is not simple, but yet you are going to tell this client that it is in the contract. Yet the contract in itself is not clear. I do not understand. How many people do read really and understand those contracts? People will sign because they now are being told you are going to get a 50,000. Even the person who is letting the, the, the agent who is letting the other person to sign does not even understand what is it that they are giving to the people? But people sign in any way because they just want to see the money. Mm. Why it is important that the contract must be clear and simple before somebody commits into it? You know, uh, in terms of legislation, in terms of the Consumer Protection Act, it does highlight the issue of plain language and full disclosure from um, suppliers or creditors um, in terms of what products they are 
um, giving to consumers. I think it's 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 when it comes to these institutions, sometimes it's an oversight or blatant ignorance um, in terms of how they address uh, consumers so that they can get their products across. But when it comes to the issue of language and simplicity, it's 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 on the backbone of law. It's more of an issue of how um, this is administered and how you know we we are unable to. Um, hold these institutions accountable to certain things. Because for example, if I don't understand this Lungu and I'm Zulu and you are telling me about this is what I'm gonna get in my contract with all these uh, complicated um, legal jargons, then you know it's, it's easy for me to fall into that trap of signing to this uh, personal loan or whatever I, I desire from the bank. And therefore I don't really necessarily have that full um, consent for some of the products and some of the, the things that are highlighted in that contract. That's why sometimes it's, it's important for banks or any institutions to do due diligence and, and inform consumers of, of in terms of what they are signing to and um, what are the penalties and consequences of what they are doing. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have that. And no one usually, they know, they take um, advantage of the fact that people won't go to court. They don't know the processes mm. of how to actually um, counter some of these things. So... It's just an issue now of uh, people. That's what I'm saying. The, the financial education side is, is very important for us because we cannot just rely on the law side of things because not everyone knows the processes in terms of how to challenge some of these contractual issues we have when we are signing up with um, financial institutions. Um, that's why we have to have that, you know, the, the space where we actually educate everyone so that they can have that responsibility themselves to know what they are signing up to before they get into um, this particular contract. I was looking uh, currently at um, cell phone contracts and um, the interest was quite interesting actually because I think a healthy interest rate would be around um, 11 to 12 percent yet you'd find in your contractual interest they range from 17 up mm. which is it's, it's quite a high interest rate and they hold you into a contract for 24 months yeah you know, so you have a, you buy a phone thousand it's supposed to be four thousand uh, cash at the end of your 24 months you're paying seven thousand to eight thousand for that particular contract yeah you know, so you're tied yeah. more into a more financial burden um so there are many even these small little debts we accrue where we are not aware we can't we don't have the opportunity to also negotiate because sometimes they're like this is how we package it take it or leave it you know and you are there desperate for a phone um so this requires that we have that knowledge um, floating around to help people, to engage with people, to actually um, have more discipline in terms of how they manage their finances. Because sometimes we have these uh, situations where people are tied into things they don't want to be tied into. They don't have the legal knowledge to access um, uh, processes to challenge these guys as well. So to relieve that uh, legal obligation, we need to be more educated in terms of how to do things before we find solutions to resolve um, and counter our actions after we've done something. So we need to attend in <laughs> like He said, like Andy said that, you know, in any government, um, whenever there is going to be a law that is going to be passed, then there is that, um, uh, what, what, how did you call it, Andy? That they, 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 uh, there is a public a hearing, yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. So Andy, um, I'm going back to, to, to where, you, where you were um, discussing this issue of credit profile. I think we've discussed a whole lot of things. No, now let's come back because we've discussed the factors that contribute to the pro, pro, uh, credit profile that are, beyond, that are beyond your control at this stage in terms of how you are being profiled and and, and, and you know, um, you are clustered in a particular um, uh, demographic or category. And in terms of your own behavior, when it comes to debt utilization, what are the things that contribute to you having um, a, a good profile? I mean, you've mentioned that I know that Experian or, or TransUnion will use, um, you know, maybe 650 scoring as, you know, sort of a, a better profile. Let us just discuss this so that we can know what are those things that impact you um, negatively in terms of your behavior now 
um, what is it that is within your control? Because we have to balance the issues. There are things that you need to do, and there are things that are outside your scope that we can, you know, we can manage through this platform. Now, what do you need to do as an individual? What impacts your negative profile in terms of your behavior? Yeah. So um, first, it's it's uh, it's how you pay and yeah. your, your credit. If you are skipping payments, for instance. Um, and I, I know some other people would say, no, I'll skip and I'll pay in the following months. It doesn't work because that history stays there, I think, for a good uh, three years. Um, I think the banks look at up to about six months. Uh, so how have you been behaving? So that's why if you have had like arrears and whatever, they should have been cleared for uh, six months and above. Yeah. Um, so it's important that you uh, you pay credit once you commit. You pay credit consistently um, on a monthly basis. That's why it's important. Now the basic principles is to uh, you know living live within your means. It means yeah. you are taking credit that you can afford. And um, <clears throat> I'll I'll say this again that the onus is on the consumer. You know because everyone is looking at their own interests. He, mm. The bank is looking at their own interest and. The, their objective is to give you as much credit as possible. They are regulated by the NCR. You are not regulated by the NCR. Mm. <laughs> you know, so you can actually, uh, people lie um, so that they can increase their affordability. So that when mm. they go to the bank and it benefits the bank, you know, yeah. as much as it puts them at risk that they might not recover their money, but it also damages your, your, your profile. So that's one of, uh, of uh, you know, paying consistently. One of the mistakes that uh, consumers do is, for instance, if they leave their jobs, um, they start earning, let's say, they used to earn on the 25th, now they are earning on the 30th, on the end of the month. Yes. They don't inform their creditors to say, look, uh, don't debit me on the 25th yes. um, anymore, debit me on the 30th. So that gap between, and they, 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 they will then leave the debit order to and after yeah. it has bound, uh, they will then want to pay manually after five days. So that is recorded as a slow payer. And that affects your credit bureau as well. Even if you've paid in that particular month, but your cycle doesn't start from the 30th. Your start, cycle starts from the 25th to the mm. 25th. So that's your month cycle. So it's yes. such uh, you know small details that people actually need to take care of. Another contributing factor that people might not be aware of is... Um, the types of credits that you, you take. If you have one type of credit, let's say you have incidental credit, like um, Akeke was talking about uh, cell phones, which is incidental credit. So it means a cell phone contract is not a credit contract on its own. It becomes a credit when you are starting to miss payments. So only then do they actually start uh, charging you. So it's incidental credit because they give you a cell phone ahead. You know, yes, yes. And then you 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 actually paying it, but they are not. Uh, you are not paying for the credit. Is not paying for the credit of the cell phone and credit for the airtime. So you are not taking a cell phone and an airtime on credit. The credit only applies when you start missing payments, and. Uh, uh, the law also uh, governs on how much incidental credit, it means uh, credit like your, uh, you know, cell phone credit, um, actually the, 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 the maximum that needs to be uh, paid. So, you know, people like IKK, uh, we get them to be our legal experts and to look at the cell phone contracts and all types of contracts, peruse on them and look at the amount of interest that is being charged. Yes. Because all of them have the max, so you can charge between this and that, it doesn't matter what the, uh, the credit um, profile of the person is, every credit, every type of credit has a max. Yes. So the type of credit, it means you have a home loan, you have a car, you have a credit bureau. If you have a mix of credit, it contributes positively to your credit than only one, because the, what has been found is that people behave differently on different types of credit. Yes. So if you, uh, for instance, people are very much protective of their houses, so they never miss, you know, payments in, in, in relation to their house, you know, yes. but they will miss a payment in relation to a clothing account, mm. um, you know, so, so such things actually have a contributing factor. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, a house is a long-term uh, commitment or a, a credit commitment. 
So the bureaus are looking at it that this person is actually, you know, can actually sustain credit, you know, because the one who actually takes credit for three months, pays it off, takes another one, pays it off. You will never know if you give them long-term credit, you know, how would they behave? So, you know, having a mix of credit actually um, makes a difference as well. Um, and then um, let me say the last one um, would be, uh, you know, to consistently check your credit profile. Mm. Checking your credit profile will help you to make sure that whatever that is there, as we mentioned before, uh, that needs to be cleared is cleared yes. on, on time. Time is of the essential factor here. Yeah. Um, because... Uh, again, the, the, the credit bureaus are given, uh, you know, a duty to say, for instance, if I pay off a debt, uh, I need to go back to the credit bureau and they need to clear that, I think, within about 20 days. I stand to be corrected. Within about 20 days. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, so let's say I had debt and I had arrears on that debt. Yes. Uh, I paid off the debt completely. Yes. The balance of that debt needs to be cleared from my credit bureau within Absolutely. about 20 days. Absolutely. If it's not cleared within about 20 days, it will stay there. Yes. Not corrected. You will go and seek credit. And, and you, must, you must be aware that uh, most of the employers now, especially in the financial sector, yes. are looking at your bureau because they look at someone who is, you know, who does not manage their money well mm. uh, to be high risk. Of uh, being a, a fraud star, uh, someone who can commit fraud. Yes, yes. So, so it's important for you to go back and actually create, check that your credit has been cleared out. So that would be things and tips that I say uh, in the control of our hands, and we can actually make do something to improve our credit bureau. And and thank you so much, Andy, about that. And and the the other you know um, tip as well is debt inquiries. Um, too many debt inquiries mm. as well. If you go yeah. to this shop and you 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 know you say, can I you know even if you're just inquiring, yeah. you didn't really take out the debt. Yeah. But if you go to, to 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 point A and you go to B and you go to C, there's just too many inquiries in your name at the same time. That can also yeah. uh, impact your 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 credit profile negatively. Yes. Yeah. So so yeah yeah. So it affects your credit profile in as in the perspective with the perception, Pers perception not necessarily yes. your, 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 because your credit score, it doesn't have a much weighting on your, on your credit score. So it won't affect your credit score significantly, but yes. the perception yes. from the person who's looking at your credit profile would say, hey, this person is running <laughs> around and looking for credit. You can't start. <laughs> because remember I said, there's a reconciliation. It's a very important point. Thank you so yeah. much for raising it. There's a, there's, a, there's a cycle of three months in terms of reconciling from the three, uh, mm. uh, you know, uh, from the different credit bureaus, right? Yes. Uh, so within that cycle of three months, someone can actually take credit from one, two, three. And there's people who are smart enough and who know this. They can yes. take credit from one, three different credit uh, uh, providers. They know that the information won't be updated within a month. So they are yes. doing this within a week, you know. Sure. So by the time you check the credit bureaus, it would be too late because the person would have been exposed or would have received the credit. Yeah. Uh, so so in, in looking at um, all these profiles yes. uh, uh, or all these checks, then the creditor would say, this person, after leaving here, they might be going to another creditor. Absolutely. And another. Yeah. Very, very good. Oh, and then there is an issue of judgment. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I, I also, you know, I, I had to emphasize this um, when uh, I thought Taps was going to join us in terms of explaining this, there's someone's this judgment. Maybe I can, yeah. can also just help us clarify the two so that our people can understand because I've, I've, I've you know, I've heard cases whereby a person would say, I, and, and just leave it there <laughs> up until it is too late then now you know the red ends are coming and, and they're taking you out of the house so let, let's just say unpack this the difference between summons and judgment and or maybe let's start with judgments as far as your credit profile yeah so a judgment a means that it's a court order it mm. means the creditor has been able to successfully go to court mm. um, and get a judgment on your behalf it means it's an attachment um, yeah. on your on your profile 
because most of the time it's an unsecured credit. So by that time, they should be sending um, uh, what do you call, um, you know, the people that come and actually take your stuff. I don't I know. I, last time I checked, there were red ends. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. Before the red ends. Uh, the, the, red ends uh, the sheriff. The sheriff. Uh, yes. The sheriff of the court to yes. attach, to send a letter to say we are attaching. That's too late. Um, so that that is a, a, a judgment can only be received through a court process. Even then, uh, so if someone comes, and I hope I'm not jumping the gun here, uh, IKK will be more technical about this, but if someone, if someone's is the last notification that you get before a judgment actually is placed on your name mm. or is put on your profile before mm. they go to court. Now you are given 10 days after you've received the summons uh, to say, we don't want to attach. It, with unsecured credit, there's nothing to attach. It's unsecured. You haven't yes. put anything collateral yes. by court. So they can't come and take your sofas or your house or anything. There's nothing yes. linked to that type of credit. The yes. worst that could happen is what is called a judgment or a blacklist on your profile yes. in your credit bureau. That's the worst that could happen. If, the the blacklist is what we call a negative listing. Is that is is that correct? Yes, yeah, there's, 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 there's different a negative listing and there's a different um, categories of them. So, but now for let's focus on the judgment one. Okay. Okay. Um, because, uh, for instance, I'll make you an example that a debt, bad debt written off is not a judgment. Mm. It's just a creditor says we are tired of chasing after you. We are writing off the credit. <laughs> And then we are putting that on the credit profile so that all the other creditors might see that you are just a bad payer. But it's not yeah. a judgment. You know, it's okay. just a bad debt. But it's a bad listing. It's a negative listing. Yes. So you can say, they can, so they call a variety of negative listings are categorized under this blacklisting. Mm, but there, mm. is nothing, there is nothing that is called blacklisting, legally mm. speaking. There's just a systematic term to say it's a negative listing on your profile that affects you, right? Um, so now within these 10 days, you are then given an opportunity to remedy the situation. So then you can make arrangements with the sheriff, you know, uh, go and beg on your knees and say, no, please don't take your staff, pay a certain amount. Yes. Normally there would be a certain lump sum to actually be settled before even negotiations actually start. They would obviously talk to the creditor or the creditor would have given them um, clear instructions that this should not happen, um, you know, or... This is the only time that we'll look at a, a, a compromise, you know. So that's so the summons precedes a judgment. Let's let's put it that way. Absolutely. Um, yes, yeah. Welcome to add any de technical details that I didn't didn't add there. Okay. <laughs> no, you did very well. <laughs> no, you did quite very well uh, to simplify the, the process because um just like I mean um the process of um you know, creditors looking to take um, what belongs to them, they always submit a letter of demand, um, which is almost a friendly warning to say, listen, you have to pay up. And then after they will, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's how it's, it begins a process um, for the action. And then they will go into the summons then to, to obtain a judgment where you have to reply to them and, and then go to that negotiating table um, to see how you can do, um, you know, how you can repay that debt. And then obviously the judgment is the last process now we, <laughs> of course, um, you, you, your hands are tied and, um, you know, uh, they, they, your, your, your assets are attached uh, or in this particular case, um, if you are in an unsecured debt, you, you would have to be required to pay a certain amount uh, back to the creditor. So you've highlighted the process quite uh, uh, well. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, I am looking at our time and we are only left at two minutes. <laughs> um, uh, what, what we will do, we will have a next session where we really now unpack, you, you've mentioned, um, you've, I think we've, we, we've laid a very good ground in terms of understanding profiling, credit profiling, you know, what are the um, things that one needs to look out for when it comes to that impacts your, your behavior, you know, in terms of your credit profile. Just and at a high level, um, you know, the key take note, Andy, in terms of the, uh, and that will also be your parting words, um, in terms of um, 
the, the average scoring that one needs to, to aim for, you know, everyone wants to aim for an A, um, be it may, what is it that, you know, in when you are looking at your credit profile, hoping that everybody now is going to be able to go and access their credit profile because you, as you have indicated, it's for free once in a year and every South African is entitled to that. Um, what is it that you need to aim for? In order for you to be yeah, so it's a it's a bit um, it's 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 not a straightforward question to answer because different credit bureaus, like you initially yes. mentioned, have their different scores. So eight hundred might be the max on yes. Experian, and six hundred and forty might be the max on um, on a TransUnion, for instance. Um, yes. So uh, I think I think they are categorized into a fair. I can't remember the actual categorization, but it's fair, good, and excellent. Yes, you know, yes, in, you yes. know. Um, so depending on the kind of score, and they are categorized into red, um, you know, oh no, it's bad, fair, yes. uh, good, excellent. excellent. I think it's yeah. those four categories, yeah. you know. Yeah. So you definitely don't want to be in a bad and, uh, and fair. Fair, you know, you yeah. Want to be around and 40%. Good and <laughs> no one wants exactly to pass with 40%. Yeah. yeah, you know, and, and I mean, and that's the average, 50%. And, and it's exactly how it works. It's just to simplify it, um, mm. that if you are on 50%, you have 50-50% chance of getting um, uh, approved for credit, um, you know. But if you are in the good and excellent, uh, then your chances of being approved are actually quite high. Uh, so you, we must definitely, you know, um, look at getting into so so based on the credit you will then have to go into the exact credit bureau and look at where the good the number good actually is mm. and where the excellent was under and uh, you know make a goal to reach there based on the tips that we've actually provided oh great um andy any parting words that you want to say um yeah. so, no i mean uh, so i've been in this a uh, journey of educating people, but also I've been learning quite a lot. And I mean, mm. I think I just want to encourage people that uh, this stuff really works. Eh? Um, me and my wife have been credit free, unsecured credit free for the past, I think eight years. Mm. Eight years, we haven't taken any unsecured debt. Uh, we have never seen a need to take an unsecured debt. We don't have, mm. we don't own a credit card. A clothing account, nothing, overdraft account, nothing. We we have nothing, nothing of that sort. Um, the only credit that we have is of a property and we are yeah. using property to save up, you know, a legacy for our children. Um, yeah. Beside other assets that we are trying to invest in for, you know, the long-term or short-term uh, security and uh, long-term wealth creation. Yes. And it's, the, it's the, we, 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 I mean, I could say that we are not high income earners. You know, I'm yeah. an entrepreneur, so I don't earn a lot of money. Yes, <laughs> yes, know? yes. Most of my assets are actually locked up in the business. So the biggest equity or asset that I own is my business, right? Yes. But yes. I don't have a lot of cash flow. Yes, right? yes. Um, I'm in the high earning, uh, you know, population of the country. Yes. But I should tell you that clothes, we are able to take, uh, you know, uh, buy clothes for our children, saving. We have enough say, uh, emergency funds. Um, you know, we've got assets. We've, you know, we, we, we do have, I mean, we, you might say that we are a black middle class, but we are not earning an income of a black middle class. The mm, difference mm. is that knowledge. So I would encourage people to invest in knowledge. Absolutely. And um, if I may share, uh, for instance, our, our platform, um, uh, we've created a platform where people can access some of the personal finance Yes. Yes. Um, it's courses.finlight.co.za. Courses.finlight. Finlight is F I N for financial fin and then L I T E. It's courses.finlight.co.za. And I mean, one of the uh, modules that I like a lot there, it's about black text. It's, it, it's, yes. Uh, you yes. Know, I mean, the, the, the black text puzzle, you know, mm. uh, which is a burden on most of us. And we've had to deal with that, uh, yeah. you know, with my wife uh, and discuss on 
how are we going to deal with this black tax thing? I mean, really, it cannot hold us and tie us that we cannot make progress as a young a black family as well, you know? And uh, we have had to make certain critical decision, emotional decision, mm. but that has helped us to make progress. So we've got a course like that. We've got, we've been talking about interest. We've got a, a course on a game of interest. All of those are digital and they can be done within an hour or so if you commit yourself into them. And we've got other courses for professionals, obviously. So I would yeah. really encourage people to take financial literacy, financial education uh, seriously. Yeah. Uh, like they say, it's not about how much you earn, it's about what you do with what you earn. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, Andy.